welcome back to my channel. This weekend is officially postpartum freezer meal prep. We are gonna be cooking a number of recipes to store in our freezer so I have things on hand that I can easily heat up for myself and my family after baby girl is here. I am going to be 37 weeks pregnant in just a couple days. To be honest, you guys, I waited too long to do this. Thinking back to when I did some freezer meal prep before my first daughter, Lila, was born, ideally, I would have done this between being like 32 to 34 weeks pregnant. It's hard, you don't wanna do it too early because you don't want food just sitting around, taking up space in your freezer. Every weekend that I thought about getting this done in the last few weeks, I've just been so tired. Like I have not been wanting to be standing up in my kitchen, running around crazy at this point in pregnancy. I have simplified a bit this time around. And a lot of that I think is due to the fact that I'm gonna be having my parents here. They're gonna be helping out the next couple weeks. This time around, my focus is going to be more on recipes that help out for breakfast and lunches and snacks. Dinner meal prep, I know is something huge most people do, but to be honest, those were the least ones that I used the first time around when I did freezer prep for my first baby. It took us forever to get through the meals that I had prepped because we truly are a family that likes to decide what we're eating that day. Like a lot of times I'll make a meal plan for the week so I have all of the grocery items I need with the recipes that I have planned but then we'll mix and match what day we actually have them. But another factor is the season and the weather. My daughter Lila was born in February in Chicago. It was freezing cold. It was so nice to have some of those casserole, pasta, crock pot, heavier hearty dishes ready to go in the freezer. But baby number two is gonna be coming sometime mid to late April, maybe early May. May 3rd is my technical due date, but I don't think we're gonna be going to 40 weeks. But even so, it's already getting so warm here where we live now in Georgia, that that's just not the kind of food that we're craving for dinners at night. We just like to eat lighter. We like to do salads and do a lot of grilling with burgers or chicken. Things that typically are pretty easy once you have the ingredients ready and on hand. So in our last big grocery haul, I definitely stocked up on some more chicken breast and chicken thighs, prepped them into thin sliced fillets, chicken strips, or just portioned them out by poundage. So I had an easy grab out of the freezer dinner item prepared. As well as we did prep some ground beef into hamburger patties that are going to be ready to be defrosted and popped straight on our grill. And we also stocked up on some of our favorite easy freezer sides that you can just buy from the store. We love buying a variety of frozen vegetables that we can just pop in our air fryer as a side dish. And another thing we're planning on doing for dinners is actually using a meal service delivery. So I kind of moved over the budget I was going to use towards the dinner freezer preps towards the meal service delivery. That way we're still getting really easy, simple meals we can throw together in under an hour. Most of them say they take only about half an hour to throw together and we're eating fresh food every week. So for dinners, I feel like we're pretty covered. We're just making sure we have some things stocked in our pantry and freezer. They're gonna be ready to go for easy meals. But I always find the hardest part postpartum for me is making sure I'm eating enough throughout the day. Cause when I'm on my own with the baby and now I'm gonna be a mom of two, I'm gonna have a four year old running around I have to feed throughout the day as well well as my newborn to take care of. So for me, it was more about focusing on those breakfast and lunch and snack options to make sure that I'm eating enough throughout the day to support myself in my postpartum recovery and making sure I'm eating enough to help support my breast milk supply as it comes in. So we're taking this weekend, we're getting those recipes done. I will include the timestamps in the description box down below if you guys wanna hop around or you need to revisit certain recipes. And I will also link as many of the recipes as I can if I'm following one that I have found from another source or blog. So first things first, this morning I actually got started by popping a couple chicken breasts into my crock pot. I just popped these in with some Kinder's the blend seasoning, which is a mixture of salt, pepper, and garlic powder, as well as a half cup of water so there's some moisture in the crock pot. I've let them go on low heat for just about eight hours, so these are totally cooked through and they're ready to be shredded. I'm gonna grab out the rest of the ingredients I need for our first recipe, which is gonna be some cheesy chicken taquitos that we'll easily be able to pop in the air fryer for lunches. Also friends, if you have not yet tried the hack of shredding your chicken in the KitchenAid mixer, just do it. Thank me later. You just pop your chicken in your KitchenAid bowl. Use the paddle attachment. I find this particularly easy when you've used the crock pot to cook down your chicken because it's so moist. Make sure it's locked and we're just on low speed. Like, hello, no work from me to shred this chicken. 
This is awesome when you're doing bulk meal prep. I actually have an entire video on my channel, I'll link it in the iCard above, where I used chicken only for a huge meal prep and I started with one giant batch of shredded chicken, use it for multiple different meals. It simplified things, made it so easy. And look, perfect shredded chicken. Here's everything else we need for these super easy and quick cheesy chicken taquitos. I'm using a bar of third less fat Neuchatel cheese as well as some sharp cheddar cheese. These are getting mixed in with the shredded chicken as well as some taco seasoning to your preference. That creates the filling and then we're just using these La Banderita carb counter wraps to roll them up. I'll roll them individually in some aluminum foil and then transfer them into a large gallon Ziploc bag so we can just pull them out one by one. These heat up great in the air fryer or you can pop a couple in the oven at a time. Another great add-in is to do a can of Rotel inside, but my daughter likes these too and she doesn't like the spicy peppers in the Rotel, so we're gonna skip that today. But if you like a little spice and a little bit more texture in your taquitos, go with the can of Rotel. So I am gonna pop the rest of this in with our chicken to make the filling and get rolling. I feel like this looks like a lot of chicken for only one bar of cream cheese so I had a half a bar in my fridge from another recipe so I just popping that in as well I did put the cream cheese in the microwave for just like 40 seconds to get it softened so it'll blend easier I'm gonna blend that up first I'm gonna add just about a cup to a cup and a half of some shredded cheddar cheese and then seasoning wise I'm gonna add salt I'm gonna start with three tablespoons of taco seasoning mm, we'll start with two let's see how two goes first This is seriously such a simple recipe. I love making these just for weekly meal prep as well. You can keep them in your fridge for up to seven days or they last great again in the freezer for up to three months. Let's see, a little taste test. I think we're good. Two tablespoons was good of this seasoning. Again, if I wasn't including my four-year-old in wanting to eat these, I'd be adding a can of drained Rotel in here just for some extra flavor. Here is our filling mixture. It's very soft. Also, if you have kids and you're thinking of making these, swapping the taco seasoning for some dry ranch seasoning would also be amazing. I feel like setting up stations when you're doing a huge meal prep really helps to make things go quicker. So I'm gonna just grab a piece of tin foil, lay down a wrap. We're going in with one, Two, uh, we can probably do, I think last time I did these, I used smaller wraps. I used more of like the street taco size. So let's see, maybe three, maybe one more, probably four tablespoons will fit. These will be great. Um, you can serve on the side like some sour cream or salsa to go with them. I'm just gonna roll them up like a taco. Make sure you tuck the sides. I love these La Banderita wraps because they're just so soft. They roll super easily without needing to steam them. That's like one step you get to skip um, when you're doing these for freezer prep. Tuck, tuck. And a little roll. 100 more to go. I'm looking out from my window. Sun's coming up like the day before. These were a request from Josh. They were our absolute favorite things that I prepped before we had our first daughter, Lila. He was like, can you make those chicken taquito things again? And I'm like, yes, you remember that? It was, our daughter is over four. She's four years old. So if he can remember something from four years ago <laughs> that I cooked, I guess I'll make it again for him. Speaking of Josh loving these wraps, another variation would be to skip the seasonings in the chicken mixture and add some buffalo sauce. We love Frank sauce to make a buffalo chicken version. Shut the lights go in front. We can spend all day in bed. I get the wine and the corkscrew. Don't have to do one single thing. You don't know how much.
much I want you Just looking at you makes my whole world spin I ended up getting about 14 taquitos out of that recipe. You could easily double or triple this depending on how prepped you wanna be. Another important thing when it comes to freezer prep is making sure you label your contents because depending, I'm also making some freezer breakfast burritos and they're gonna look exactly the same in the freezer. So I have the date that I made them and I'm gonna put the name, cheesy chicken, Taquitos. Also important is if you have any specific reheating instructions. So I'm just gonna say air fry at 400 for eight to 10 minutes. I'll put your favorite music on all the way baritone. Shut the lights go in front. Next up, I have a freezer breakfast prep. We are gonna be making some turkey sausage and bacon breakfast biscuits. For this recipe, we need eggs that we're gonna make into scrambled eggs, some sliced cheese, I'm using Velveeta slices, a couple cans of Grand Southern Homestyle biscuits. I'm using some fully cooked turkey sausage patties as well as some turkey bacon that I'm gonna cook up in the air fryer. So I love to attack these big meal preps by making stations. I'm gonna get all of my ingredients cooked up the turkey bacon, I just cut in half so they were smaller strips, pop them in my air fryer at 350 degrees for about four minutes, turning them halfway through. I got my biscuits all uncanned and stacked up along with my turkey sausage patties out of their packaging. For my scrambled eggs, I accounted one egg per sandwich that I wanted to make. So since I'm doing two eight count cans of biscuits, I scrambled up 16 eggs just with some water and some seasonings. For my seasonings, I used some Kinder's buttery steakhouse seasoning as well as some salt, pepper, and garlic. And when I scrambled the eggs, you wanna scramble them a little bit soft, not too dry because you are going to be reheating these from frozen. So the original recipe I found and was following had me take one biscuit, flatten it out, stuff it with all of the ingredients, and then try to fold it all into this one piece of dough. This maybe would have worked if I used less filling, but to be honest, it was just a mess. All right, we're scrapping the stuffing. We're just gonna cook these up, assemble them, and freeze them.
preheat these sandwiches, I'm going to place them wrapped in their foil in the air fryer at 350 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. If you want to use the microwave to reheat them, wrap them in a parchment or wax paper instead of aluminum foil before transferring to your gallon size freezer bag. And then you should be able to zap them in the microwave for four to five minutes. If using the microwave method, I do like to use a slightly damp paper towel to wrap them in before microwaving. A really easy grab and go meal from the freezer is always breakfast style burritos. You can do so many different variations on these to mix them up, different kinds of breakfast meats or a variety of different veggies included. They're really filling and they can easily be eaten with one hand, which is really important when you're thinking about how you're going to keep yourself fed during the day while juggling young kids or a newborn. So today I'm making one of our favorite twists on a breakfast burrito. The base foundation for these are going to be a soft, low carb tortilla, just like I used for the chicken taquitos. I'm also dicing up some potato, which will be nice and filling, along with green bell pepper and onion. My husband does prefer meat in his breakfast burritos, so we're gonna be cooking up some ground pork sausage. And of course we need some eggs. So I'm getting started by just getting all of our veggies prepped. Then I'm gonna be baking the veggie filling as well as the eggs in the oven. And we'll start up our next assembly line to get these filled and rolled. Once I have my potato, green bell pepper, and onion mix all chopped up, I'm just drizzling it with some olive oil as well as sprinkling some Kinder's The Blend seasoning, which is salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I know, I use the Kinder seasonings constantly, guys. The Blend and the Buttery Steakhouse seasoning are my go-to seasonings. I feel like they especially work great with breakfast preps, which is why I'm using them so much in this video. But it's so nice just to have like a one-step seasoning. But anyway, I'm gonna get those seasoned up and oiled and then laid out flat on a sheet pan to go in the oven. I am doing something a little different with the eggs this time. This is my first time trying sheet pan scrambled eggs and they came out so well. You mix up your eggs like you would before putting them into a frying pan. Personally, I just mix together eggs, some water or milk and then seasoning of choice. I got a double yolk. That's good luck. I'm lining a sheet pan with parchment paper, pouring my liquid egg mixture right on top of the parchment paper, and then baking it in the oven. I'm able to bake up my sheet pan eggs as well as all of my veggie mix at the same time. And while those bake at 350 degrees, just checking them occasion on when they're done. I think the veggies took about 20 minutes and the eggs took about 12. I'm gonna go ahead and also cook up my pork sausage on the stove top. They set in a nice thin layer, and then I was able to use a pizza cutter to slice strips of scrambled egg. These laid really neatly inside the burritos and made it way less messy to try and wrap and roll. Again, since my plan will be to cook these up in the air fryer, I'm wrapping them in tin foil. If you prefer to put yours in the microwave, skip the foil in favor of some parchment paper before you put them in the freezer gallon bags. We like to serve ours with some fresh salsa or sour cream to dip them in. 
and will eat these up for either breakfast or lunches. If you just need a hearty snack midway through the day, they're a great boost of protein. They came together really quickly and I know we won't have any problem eating through these in the first couple weeks postpartum. Well, freezer prep definitely took more than a weekend. At this stage in pregnancy, I just could not do it all in one day or across a couple days. So here's another recipe I decided to do. Just as I was making some pancakes for my family one morning, I decided to triple the recipe. This is one of the easiest ways I have found to do freezer prep as a part of my regular routine. On a morning or an evening when I'm making a meal that I know freezes well, I will double or triple a batch of something and then you end up with extra meals ready to go in your freezer. So this morning I made some peanut butter protein pancakes. I used the Krusty's light and fluffy buttermilk pancake mix, which is a super easy mix that you only have to add water to. I boost up this pre-made mix by adding in some chia seeds for extra fiber, as well as some organic PB Fit peanut butter powder. This is gonna add a really nice light peanut butter flavor to the pancakes, as well as a boost of protein. Once I cook them, I'm able to lay them out to fully cool, and then I can place them in freezer Ziploc bags. When ready to reheat, I just pop them in the toaster. And because they have that light peanut butter flavor, they're great just to snack on on their own with some light butter, or you can add additional peanut butter or syrup and have them traditional pancake style. My daughter loves the combination of peanut butter and maple syrup on her pancakes. So these are a perfect, easy, and ready to go morning breakfast when we need something quick before school or one of her activities. And since I was on a roll this morning, I went ahead and made a really great snack recipe to have in the freezer for postpartum. These are a recipe we often make as a family when we're going camping or to have as trail snacks if we're doing some hiking or outdoor activities. They're a small compact snack, but they pack a good amount of calories and protein and fiber all in one. The hearty oats and seeds will be excellent lactation support postpartum. And my daughter loves them, they're super fun because we make ours monster cookie style with some mini M&Ms. For this recipe, the base is rolled oats. You can use plain oats, but I do have this blend from Trader Joe's that's organic rolled oats with ancient greens and seeds. If I were using regular oats, I'd also toss in maybe some flaxseed or chia seeds just to boost up the fiber content. Then I'm mixing two cups of this oat blend with three quarter cups of creamy peanut butter, a quarter cup of mini M&Ms, and a hack I have for using honey when you have to measure it out is to give your measuring cup a little spray of oil, avocado oil or olive oil, whatever you have on hand. I just spray a little in, wipe it out so it's just a slick surface. Then you can measure your honey and it doesn't make a sticky mess all over your measuring cup. But I also added a quarter cup of honey and then you just give this all a good mix till it's all incorporated. I like to use a mini cookie scoop to portion them out. And then I just roll them in my hand so they form compact little snack bites. These are ready to eat as is once you thaw them from the freezer. Thank you guys so much for checking out what I freezer prepped for postpartum, some breakfast, lunch, and snack ideas. Let me know in the comments what one you're gonna try or what your go-to freezer meal prep is. 
please hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Until next time, bye. I always do.